Welcome to our new show on the range. Welcome to On The Range. Let's get out on that range. Well, that's what we kind of had planned on doing for our first show, is being out on the range, hence the name. But yeah, I, God had other plans for us. Let's take a look at them. Yeah, well, there you go. Neither Jack nor I wanted to get involved in that. We decided we weren't going to go out in the range with that. <laughs> so we're in here today, and we're going to talk about holsters and try to talk about it real briefly. I'll start out with the basic different designs of holsters. You've got the classic belt holster, and this is probably the most common design for belt holsters, the pancake design with a belt loop at either side. It works quite well to keep it tight to the body and also gives you good retention on the sidearm because when you cinch it up with the belt going through there, it really kind of flexes that and, and tightens it up on the sidearm. Gives you great retention and puts it snug against the body. The other would be the classic clip-on inside the waistband or it could be a leather strap with a snap on it inside the waistband which works quite well for your concealability and as you age and start putting on weight not so much it's not so comfortable as it was when you were younger but the comfort really doesn't seem to be a problem if, if you're not weight challenged Then, of course, there's the classic belt holster, Avenger style, Askin style, uh, Bruce Nelson style, that has the belt loop on the back, and your pant belt loop goes in between, and the belt goes on this other side. So, nice thing about this that I like is it doesn't take up as much real estate as that pancake design. But when you have this set up, you're pretty much restricted at carrying it about at 3 o'clock, which happens to be Mr. Holster's favorite spot. I did a, a video a couple weeks ago about this holster here, the Galco Avenger, which is that same design. And I'll put a link to it up here. And I, I went into detail why I like carrying that. Basically, the discipline I've been taught, my draw is a of the sidearm is straight up. So a direct vertical drop is what I prefer. And the location at three o'clock is what I prefer. So that's why I prefer this holster. But you see, what works for me might not necessarily work for you. It kind of depends on your body build. I've got a long torso and that it works fantastic for me and I also like it because I can wear it on the opposite location which I go into on that other video as a cross draw and you can do that because it's a direct vertical drop now if you've got a shorter torso that may be a problem drawing that firearm up especially when most of the holsters you'll probably look at that sidearm is going to ride pretty high on the belt so the higher it up, up it is the higher it's going to be harder it's going to be to draw that up the higher your hand is going to be to start with so that's why the most popular design tends to be a design like this that's a pancake holster on the belt holsters is a pancake holster and it rides with a forward cant with a rear sight going forward that enables you to draw it out this way. So it isn't as big a challenge drawing it. See what I'm saying? It also, when you get a holster like this, 
enables you to wear it in a lot of different locations. You're really not confined to wearing it at that three o'clock point to have it work properly for you. Being a forward cant and the double belt loop. And again, as I talked about before, that double belt loop gives you a good retention on the sidearm and good concealability because it draws it so tight to your body. So the last that I'll talk about is the current new designs of the Kydex style with the uh, tuckable where you can tuck your shirt in like that to cover it and again inside the waistband which tends to be a little less comfortable for older fellows like myself that you know when you start putting on that that extra weight like Mr. Holster has. Not so comfortable inside the waistband. The other thing I don't particularly care for about these is the amount of real estate they take up. And for the, this one happens to be made for a Ruger SP-101 and you know really the concept of that gun is it's a smaller firearm and this holster is like absolutely opposite to the concept of the, the firearm. I know they're comfortable and they work really well, but it, it just, yeah, seems kind of counterproductive to me. But to each their own, once again, it depends on your body and what you prefer and what works for you. That's what you really need is what works for you. I'll leave you with one more thought on holsters that I have found over the years. There's been a lot of, a lot of holsters over the years that are kind of a one-all fits everything and very adjustable they aren't direct vertical drop they aren't F are forward canted they allow you to do whatever you want with it by having multiple um, clips and screws and holes and they're big enough to leave you a lot of positioning and they have some sort of device in the holster that will work with any type of sidearm and pretty much my feeling on that is they, they, they'll work for anything and they don't work well for anything. They're pretty much just a waste of time and junk. There you go. Tried to keep that so it didn't take too long, that little quick synopsis of Mr. Holster's concept of what makes a good holster maybe. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully next week, uh, yeah, the weather will cooperate and Jack and I will be out on the range. Till then, from Mr. Holster and Jack, go out and stay safe. Well, I'll give you a couple more minutes, Spur, and then you got to come in. Yeah. <laughs>